Amen. Hello and God bless you. This is the House of His Glory at iChurchForLife.com or iChurchForLife.ChurchOnline.org. And I am your pastor, the pastor of this totally digital e-church ministry. My name is Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones. Thank you for joining us today. If you are joining us live online for our live chat at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, thank you visitors for joining us. Please, 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 I say this every week, I can see how many people are visiting us. They're tuning in. Last week we had 20 visitors besides our regulars, but it would be so cool if you would click on your three menu button. Actually, I should go like this. I think they're in the upper uh, corner here. The three menu bars. You can put in a nickname where you don't have to put in your email address and uh, say hello. Let us know that you're visiting, that you're checking us out. Or you can log in and set up an account if you have been back several times and you haven't yet logged in and put in an email address. Let us know that you're here, that you're fellowshipping with us, and most of all, that you are joining in with us as we fellowship with our Heavenly Father. So, let's go before the throne of our hearts, the altar in our spirits, and say some hello, some welcome to our Heavenly Father. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for bringing us to another day in which we can set aside this time as a tenth of our week, a tithe of our time to fellowship with you, to be in your presence, to fellowship with one another, to fellowship with your word, Heavenly Father, uh, to come one step closer to being conformed into the image of your Son. Thank you, Father, for bringing us through the week, no matter what trials and tribulations we face, no matter what difficulties, no matter what praise reports we had. We thank you. We know it was all because of you that we are here to this time, that we can be here now. And even if problems were not resolved and uh, prayers were not answered, we know that by coming here today, Father God, you can provide those answers through this message. You can provide solutions through this word. You can give us a touch of your presence to let us know that no matter what you are with us, you will never leave us even as we are going through and that you are taking us through from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And we thank you for the presence of your glory. We thank you for all your blessings, all your promises. And most of all, I thank you, Lord, for everyone who is visiting, who is watching, no matter from where, no matter uh, at what time, whether it's live with us or on demand, I know that your presence is with us. Your presence fills this message. Thank you for blessing us and giving us a spirit of revelation that we can hear this word, apply this word, understand this word, and most of all, be examples of this word to all that we meet, that we can come closer to walking in power and your glory because of this message. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer. Amen. Woo, thank you for joining me in that prayer. And you know what? Right now, let's go into a song of praise. Turn your heart towards the Lord. And let's just rejoice together that he is our God. I'll see you back here right after this song. Trying to get the 
upper hand So much to do in so little time It's a crazy life It's ready, set, go It's another wild day When the stress is on the rise In my heart I feel you say Just breathe Just breathe Come and rest At my feet Chaos calls, but all you really need is to just breathe. Third cup of joe just to get me through the day. Want to make the most of time, but I feel it slip away. I wonder if there's something more to this crazy life. I'm busy, 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 and it's no surprise to see. That I only have time for me, me, me There's gotta be something more to this crazy life I'm hanging on tight to another wild day When it starts to fall apart in my heart I hear you say Just breathe, just breathe Come and rest at my feet and be, just be Chaos calls, but all you really need Is to take it in, fill your lungs The peace of God that overcomes Just Just breathe Alright, we are back with the Word of God that He has for us today. We are in, I guess, is this the fourth week of October? We are in our sermon series topic called Replanting in the Harvest. And if you've seen online um, and the chat screen, my son has been so cool to bring up our uh, sermon series scripture Amos 9 and 13 um, it's either in the window or it's in the notes um, Amos 9 and 13 talks about a time of harvest when God is going to accelerate uh, the time of planting and harvest where we are going to see the results of those seeds that were planted before we've even planted them when we're going to see answers to prayers before we've prayed them we are going to see solutions to the problems before they are even problems and it's a time of harvest it's a season that we're coming into and Amos 9 and 13 uh, poetically and cryptically describes this season as a time when uh, we will be in a place uh, uh, where we will hear the prophetic word a, a place where the people will be drawn to uh, it, it is a hill uh, that's there in the mountain of the Lord's house 
that uh, is really the church. And it's the church where we are hearing the prophetic word of God. We've got to get positioned in that in that church body because we are the church and people hear a prophetic word not a building not a worship service and so we are the church that needs to be positioned uh, in a congregation that is ready uh, to hear that prophetic word and is ready to receive the harvest even as we are replanting so in preparation for that all this month I've been talking about planting individuals into this congregation as members of this church body so that we can be replanted into the community of Silmar and help to actually build the kingdom of God here and as we grow in other communities as well. So that's the whole buildup uh, uh, of what we've been talking about all month. And, um, and last month, or excuse me, last week I was talking about how uh, as members of the body of Christ we are the branch of God's planting uh, and that we've got to come together uh, as members to fulfill the work uh, that God has for us um, and, and we'll do that best by being positioned for the harvest, by being planted as a seed in the ministry of God. And so today, uh, I want to extend that message and talk to you about the seeds of togetherness, okay? And, and so now I'm going to shift gears to, to really ask you today's question. And uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a complicated question well it's a simple question with a complicated answer let me put it that way um, the life that you're living right now the life that you're living as a Christian right now whether uh, you're kind of a, a social media Christian uh, that follows you know memes and graphics with scriptures uh, whether you you know cruise online for different uh, uh, messages and preachers that you like to listen to whether you actually are a member of a church body uh, but you don't actually go very often or whether or not you're a member of a church organization and you're very active uh, with that other church ministry and just you know happen to be cruising through at this time uh, because you saw a post on social media whatever you uh, 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 how your Christianity looks at this time. Now, think about the kinds of prayers that you're praying uh, in your Christianity if you actually come to a place where you pray at all. Does your Christianity uh, look like you are surviving this life or thriving in this life and some of us might be thriving in life we might be doing great things we might have a great job driving a great car you know uh, I got lots of friends with brand new babies and uh, they're looking online like they are living the life right I've got friends with businesses that look like they're doing well I've got family that is traveling the world and they look like they're doing well but is your life really surviving from moment to moment from day to day from paycheck to paycheck bill to bill problem to problem or are you thriving by the grace of God, by His Word, through His truths? Are you living the life of abundance and blessing that the Word of God has promised? Well, if your answer is no, not really, you can be, you should be, God wants you to be, but it's going to take a breakthrough 
in your thinking, a shift, a change in your perspective. I've been talking about it for a while. Periodically, I bring it up. We need a shift in the way we see ourselves as Christians, in the way we see ourselves as children of the Most High God. We need a shift in the way we see ourselves in relationship to other people. Um, we need to see ourselves differently when it comes to uh, our own Christianity, when we think of ourselves as Christians, and specifically uh, that shift means thinking of ourselves as children of the kingdom. Why do I say that? Because of Matthew 13, chapter 13, verses 37 and 38. I'm going to put them both up on the screen. And he, Jesus, answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now in this parable, we know this parable as the uh, parable of the wheat and the tares. And once again, uh, Jesus was giving the description, the definition, the illustration. He was describing the meaning behind the parable of the wheat and the tares. And as we've been talking about seed all month long, uh, we now see where Jesus is specifically saying that uh, he that sows the good seed is the Son of Man, that's Jesus, and uh, that the field is the world, right? Uh, and that the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The children of the kingdom. This is what I've been talking about all month long. We are the branch of God's planting, but he wants to to plant us as good seed uh, in the kingdom of God for the purpose of the kingdom of God. We are children of the kingdom, which means more than just being a child of God. Being a child of the kingdom means we have dominion, we have authority, and we have a purpose to rule and reign and kick the wicked one out of our domain. Amen? And so... Uh, we as Christians, we need to think about replanting ourselves into our own Christianity. Uh, we need to think about being truly planted in a ministry, in a church for the work of the kingdom. And we need to think about what that work, what that planting is going to look like in the world. Uh, and so when you look at your own world, your job, uh, your, your work, your friends, what you do for entertainment, you know, where you shop, how you live your life. Are you living your life for Christ in all of those areas? Or are you just trying to get by like everybody else? We need a shift in our thinking and we need to replant some seeds of truth about who we are and what we're on this planet to do so that we can actually start doing what God created us to do, purposed us to do, and receiving what Jesus died on the cross for us to receive. Now, like I said before, we talked about different kinds of seed, right? We've talked about the seed is the Word of God, right? You've got to plant the Word of God in your heart. You've got to plant the Word of God in your life so that your life will start looking like the Word of God. We've talked about the seed being money, okay? And that when you plant your money into uh, your church congregation, uh, into the storehouse of the ministry, that you're being fed by. Not only does it provide food for you in the natural, provide for your provision, but it also, uh, your seed is multiplied so that you can give more and that you can do more, that you can be a blessing to others. Uh, that uh, as your seed is multiplied, your ability to uh, uh, 
be a blessing to others is multiplied. The fruit of your righteousness is multiplied. And so now we are really getting into the nitty gritty of this idea of people being multiplied uh, and being planted and uh, growing and increasing in the kingdom of God. You are that seed to be sown, to be planted, to be multiplied, that your gifts, your talents, your abilities, and what you're able to do in this world is multiplied. That your money, your income, your provision, and your prosperity is multiplied so that you can do more in and for the kingdom of God. That the word of God is planted in your life so that your life is multiplied, increased, and grown into a, a replica, a duplicate, an example of what the word of God says. Right? You've got to plant all of these seeds in your life and be the seed that's planted in the kingdom of God in order for you to grow in the kingdom of God. Children grow. And if we're a child of the kingdom, we need to grow in the kingdom. You plant a seed and it grows. A seed can't grow unless it's planted. If you want to grow as a Christian, you need to be planted. If you want your money to grow and increase, it needs to be planted. If you want your life uh, to thrive, then you need to plant the seed of the Word of God in your life so that it will grow. Amen? And so, we know uh, when we looked at John chapter uh, 15 that God is the husbandman, right? He's the gardener. He's the, the overall gardener. But, you know, some gardeners do more than just pluck weeds, like, like the parable of the wheat and the tares. A tear is a weed, right? Some gardeners do more than just grow the grass, uh, water the plants, and pull out the weeds. Some gardeners are so skilled in their husbandry that they know how to uh, restructure and shape that seed. That's why we see varieties of roses and varieties of peaches that they're um, uh, that they're grafting in. And God himself talks about how uh, as uh, the church we are that wild olive branch that's grafted into the olive tree, right? That, that, that grafting together creates a new seed, a new species, a new creation, right? And so God has created in us a new creation as if he's created a new flower, a new plant, a new fruit, a new species of plant uh, that starts as that seed. And that seed will grow up. That new species is because it grows up uh, with Jesus abiding and residing in us. That's why he says he's the vine. We are the the plant, uh, the branches. We are a new plant because this plant is grafted in with Jesus Christ. Amen. And so God has created a variety of these new seeds, of these new creations. Uh, this is kind of what we talked about last week. This variety, uh, some of these seeds are for leadership. Some of these seeds are for giving. Some of these seeds are for worship. Some of these seeds are for um, helps. Some of these seeds are for uh, healing. Some of these seeds are for teaching. Uh, some of these seeds are prophetic. Some of these uh, seeds have the gift of faith, right? The gift of miracles. Some of these seeds are pastors. Some of these seeds are evangelists. What is the seed uh, that God has uh, has created in you to be planted for the kingdom of God. I was asking that all last month. Um, uh, but 
you know, some seeds, like you can't have an orchard uh, by just planting one seed. You don't get that orchard right away. That seed has the potential for an orchard in it, but you've got lots of years, and ultimately you are still planting more than one seed. You cannot plant one seed at a time and expect an orchard. You get what I'm saying? And so, likewise, when I say, what is the seed in you that God wants planted in the world for the kingdom of God? We can't be planted as individuals. We need to come together and be planted as that garden, as that orchard, with that variety of what God has placed in each of us into each of us. We are the seeds of togetherness, if you will. We are the seed uh, that when we are planted together, we will grow together and we will grow uh, as a church. And that's how the church will grow. As we grow in size, we grow in numbers, we increase in power, we increase in ability to make change for and in the kingdom of God. It, it's a change that will overcome all the powers of the enemy. It will overcome all the wicked of the world. We look at the abundance of the homeless situation. I'm hearing from my son about the ease of, of drugs amongst teenagers. We are seeing more and more people uh, who are uh, confused about their gender or who are positive they have a different gender than they were born. But let me tell you something about that. It, they had to uh, figure out who they were by their DNA. It doesn't matter what they feel inside, their DNA is still going to say you're either a boy or a girl plain and simple. It's the confusion of the world. It's the lies of the enemy, the deceptions of the wicked one, crime and murder and crazy people. <laughs> you know, people are losing their minds. They're being tormented by the enemy. They're possessed and oppressed by uh, the devil. And, and and I mean that seriously. I mean, if you see every day on the news where someone else is getting run over by a car and the people are just driving off, that's it's crazy. The world is going crazy. And the church, the children of the kingdom are the only ones that are going to have the ability and the power to overcome the powers of wickedness and darkness in this world. Amen. But you know what? We have too many Christians that are solitary in their Christianity. They're, they're uh, you know, some people say, oh, they're rogue Christians or whatever the case may be. But they, and if that's you, we all at times have come up with reasons to justify why we are not connected with the church, why we don't want to be connected with church folk, why pastors uh, are hypocrites, why, uh, you know, uh, we don't want religion, organized religion, whatever our excuses are. Here's what the Word of God says about it in Hebrews 10 and 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner is of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. All right, so what is the day that is fast approaching? Because it is fast approaching. That's what I was just describing when I'm talking about homelessness and crime and death and uh, gender issues and drugs and addiction. And oh, there's so much more um, besides bullying on one end of the scale and, and uh, sex trafficking on the other end of the scale. The day is fast approaching. What day is that? That's the day when God says enough is enough, snatches out the children of the kingdom, and begins to clean up the mess of this world uh, through those seven years of the great tribulation. The day is fast approaching, and look, the world is going to get worse. And 
when I talk about positioning yourself in a church and with the church, the only um, protection, the only safe haven, the only place of uh, refuge is going to be in a church with a church in a church meaning in a church congregation with your called out body of believers with other children of the kingdom that's where your protection is going to be that's where your safety is going to be it's not going to be out there a solitary christian going well i don't need a man to teach me so long as i read my word you know you ain't reading your word okay it's not going to be out there some rogue christian well saying uh uh I'm not into organized religion. It's not going to be uh, some solitary, self-righteous Christian who who is saying, um, you know, that uh, my I'm secure in my salvation. I will never uh, lose my salvation, and I don't need to go to church to keep my salvation. No. All, well, all of that may be true. What you need is the fellowship of a church body that you can come together with and walk in power with, where you can get fueled and empowered, where you can get the knowledge that God is only going to pass down through a pastor. Why is he going to designate apostles, pastors, prophets, evangelists, and teachers, and then say, but you don't need a pastor? Or why is he going to say, do not forsake assembling yourselves together and then tell you, but you in particular, you don't need to go to church. God is not going to circumvent his word. Why? Because his word has power. There is power in the word of God. And that power, that collective power, like on Pentecost, when all of those 120 people were on one accord, that's when the power of God was made manifest in them and through them. And so when you bring your powers, your ability, your gifts, your talents, your calling, your uh, uh, supernatural gifts, into the body of Christ with other gifted, talented, uh, able and capable uh, children of the kingdom, then we can actually make some changes in this world through uh, the kingdom of God. In earth as it is in heaven, thy kingdom come. We have the ability and the power to bring God's kingdom in the earth. We have been given the keys to the kingdom, the keys of binding and loosing. But if you are not in a church body that's teaching you how to use, him, use them, empowering you how uh, to use them, imparting... Um, in you your supernatural gifts and teaching you how to use them coming together with on one accord then you know your keys are dangling on a hook and you don't even you know how you get that old you find that old keychain and you're like where does this key go to i don't even know if i still have that uh uh that box, that room, that lock, whatever it is, that's how uh, your keys are right now. The keys that you've been given to the kingdom of God. See, as children of the kingdom, we are stronger together. If we are isolated, uh, then... Uh, First and foremost, we're not visible. And if we're not visible, we're not viable. Ooh, that's good. If we're not visible, then we're not viable. Amen? Uh, and, and if we're isolated, then we're easily targeted, right? If we're that lone voice uh, talking whatever, whatever, all by us, then we're an easy target. Hey, I always like to say, the squeaky wheel doesn't get greased. The squeaky wheel gets kicked. And you know that. That's true because the loudest Christians that are talking that whoop de woo and talking stuff that is isn't even related to the love of Jesus Christ those are the ones that are getting kicked those are the ones that are easily targeted and unfortunately those are the ones that represent the rest of us that are too isolated and too quiet to speak up we are stronger together and when we come together in like-mindedness when we come together uh, when I say like-mindedness right 
here we come together because we have this like-minded minded understanding of the glory of God. Another church will have a like-minded understanding of healing, right? And so they're stronger in healing and manifesting healing, being healed and walking in healing for others because they come together with that same mindset. They're on one accord. We will come together in greater power, everyday power for the needs and deliverance and power and purpose of others when we are like-minded and, and, and planted together as seeds of God's glory. Amen. And so, you know, when it comes to being easily targeted, here's a testimony uh, uh, that my son gave uh, or told me just the other day and it's not a testimony it's really a a story you know that he was saying that he doesn't mind being a christian like he's not ashamed of being a christian um but what bothers him is how at school his friends have already kind of assumed that he's super religious uh that he's uh uh you know uh deep, deep Christian, whatever the terminology was, and that by separating him as this super religious Christian, this over-the-top Christian, they've already got a mindset of what he believes, what he will and will not do, uh, you know, that they said, you know, well, we know you're not going to do drugs because you're this super-duper religious Christian. Uh, and he was like, you know, uh, that has nothing to do with it. I'm not going to do drugs anyway, you know, which praise God, he said that. But here's, here's the thing about him feeling like it, he's targeted be, and uh, that it's assumed they know all about him because he's this super over the top Christian. You know what? We all face that, whether we're uh, teenagers or adults or seniors, right? We all find ourselves in an environment where we don't want to be targeted because we it's assumed what kind of Christian we are. I, I feel like that when I see, you know... Um, religious leaders on TV or political leaders who say that they're Christians and they've got some crazy whacked out right wing extreme conservative uh, borderline racist just uh, no that is not the love of Christ in what you're saying what when the I feel when they get like that and they're highly visible, I feel uh, that, that that light is shined on me, that then my friends or people I know are going to look at me and assume, mm, I'm like that, you know? And, and here's the thing. Paul said, do not be ashamed of the gospel, right? And, and and we get that we're like I know Jesus he loves me I love him and, and I can't be ashamed of that he saved me from my sin why should I be ashamed of that right but when it comes to our Christianity and the life we're living it's easy to feel like you know I don't need people to know I don't want people to know just you know psh, just ignore <laughs> nothing to see here keep on moving right uh, but that's where the strength in numbers comes to place that if uh, if my son was in an environment where everybody felt like he did where everybody had that same you know I'm passionate for Jesus I'm 13 I'm 14 I'm 17 and I know my gifts and I know I have the ability to heal my peers and talk truth and I know the Word of God and I know Jesus in me and, and you know he's got somebody who thinks like him and more people that know where he's coming from then the minority is the person who's talking crazy and you're less affected by the craziness, right? You're less affected by the assumptions they make. And so 
that's why I'm saying we need to be planted as seeds together. We need to partner with what God has for this ministry together. So while I've been calling out for leaders, I've been calling out for worshipers, I've been calling out for members, I'm calling out for everyone to partner together, to stand together, to lock arms together, to be on one accord and partner with the word that God has for this ministry. And the word, like the bread, the truth, right? That comes through this ministry. Because 1 Corinthians 10 and 17 says, For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. I like how that scripture starts that we being many are bread, are one bread. Why? Because as we partner with the bread of life, Jesus Christ, who is the word, when we partner with the word of God, we are conformed into the image of that word, Jesus Christ. And we become like the bread who is our bread of life. When we partner with this ministry in particular, we are glorified. Why? Because Jesus is the expressed image of the glory of God. God. We too are to be expressed images of God's glory, to manifest His glory. What's His glory? That's total power. That's total abandon to the deeper things of God, to the presence of God, and, and throwing off the limitations of what He wants to do in you, through you, and for you. Amen. The glory, it doesn't get any bigger, greater, or more powerful than God's glory. And He wants that for you, for every aspect of your life, for every aspect of your day, no matter no matter what job, career, or purpose you're walking in, no matter whether you're 13, 30, or 300, <laughs> whatever your age is, whatever your purpose is, whatever your calling is, whatever your gifts and talents are, God wants to use them for His glory in the kingdom of God, right? And so we must be planted together. We're stronger together. We have a greater purpose together. Uh, if we walk together uh, as partners and partakers, uh, uh, with the king for the kingdom of God. Now, in this replanting, uh, in uh, uh, and replanting together as partners with this ministry, Colossians 1 and 12, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. We know this word meet means has made us uh, uh, um, to match, made us equal, to be partakers, to be partners with. We've talked about that, to be partners uh, uh, with the saints of the saints of light. That means uh, if you're a saint and I'm a saint and Terrence is a saint, Justice is a saint, Alicia is a saint, you know, all the members are saints that we partner together uh, with one another as saints of the light, the true light that lights all mankind. That's Jesus Christ. And then Hebrews 3 and 11 completes that thought by saying, wherefore, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. That as we come together in each of our individual callings, as we partner together uh, with other saints of light, that we consider it's all because of Jesus Christ. We do it with him abiding in us. Like we've talked before, we can't do anything in and of ourselves. We can only do it because he's the vine and we are the branches. But branches is plural. Amen. It's not just one Jesus with one branch. 
you all by yourself we are the branches it's one vine with many branches and so I'm asking you this month consider being a branch of the planting of the house of his glory partnering with this ministry with your gifts with your talents whether as a worshiper or a leader whether as a member or with your finances it is all a necessary part of growing a ministry as we grow the kingdom of God amen amen I pray the Spirit of God touches your heart leads your heart speaks to you about how you can be planted and should be planted how he wants you to be planted not just in this ministry but in the world to do great and greater things in him through him for the people the lost and hurting people of this world amen amen that's what it's all about like i said last week in blessing will be blessed and as we multiply we will be multiplied amen amen well that is the word of god for today i i hope you can tell i'm so excited by this word and what it means the potential that it means for me for us as Christians, for this ministry, as a church, and for what we can do in the kingdom of God, especially as I see the need is so great and we're the only ones that can fulfill it and God is ready to empower us to do so. Okay, I'm not going to talk my way into another, uh, another uh, preach, so let's go into a song of worship and we will come out for prayer and close this word upon our lives and our hearts. I'll see you back here in a minute or two. God bless you. Why you give me so much? 
loved by you Amen. I'm so glad you have uh, come back, stuck around, and you are joining me for this closing prayer. You know, these closing prayers are so important. You know, um, until we get that larger location where we can have an altar where you can bring your concerns and issues before the feet of the Lord, we have this time. Uh, that's what this closing prayer is for, uh, that you will uh, go to your knees in your heart, in your spirit, lay before the Lord in uh, in His presence, in, in your heart, and, and, and just pour out uh, your issues or receive the word that he has given you through this message today. And so that's what I want to do right now. Father God, I thank you for this word. Father, I pray that you would uh, touch each heart and mind that listen to or watch this message uh, with the piercing truth of clarity of what you have for their life, Father God, that you would give them a vision, that you would give them an impression, that you would give them a dream, that you would give them a thought, an inkling of just a, a, a portion of the possibility of what you want to do in them and through them, of the gifts and the greatness that you have woven into their very DNA, that they would get a glimpse of what they're capable of doing and achieving by way of your grace and your glory, for your glory. Father God, open our eyes to the possibility that as we uh, begin to see the things that hurt our hearts, that frustrate us, that sadden us, that make us angry about the world around us, that you will begin to grow up that seed of possibility that we might have the solution or the ability to eradicate the the wickedness uh, of this world together with you in Jesus Christ. And so, Father God, I thank you right now for everyone watching and listening. I thank you, Father God, for bringing them to this ministry. And I thank you for the great and greater things that we can do together. And so right now, Father God, I pray against any hindrances, obstacles, barriers, or lies of the enemy that would keep them from receiving this word for themselves. Healing. Uh, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed. No sickness, no disease, no pain, no ailment shall come between you and what you're able to do in the kingdom of God. No depression, no thoughts of chaos or confusion, deception or lies would come between you and what God wants to do through you. Oh, and provision, prosperity, that there would be no lack that would keep you from being able to be a blessing, that would keep you from uh, touching the lives of others, helping others, and doing great and greater things in the kingdom. I pray God's greatness on your life in and through you, the light of Christ shining through you that all who see you will see Jesus. I pray this prayer in the mighty, matchless, perfect, glorious, astounding, amazing, extraordinary name of Jesus Christ, the same Jesus who lives and abides in you. It is in his name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. God bless you. I mean that sincerely. God bless you. And so let's go have a quick word of partnership. Well, loved ones, thank you for joining me today. I feel it. I don't know if you feel a bit hyper today, a bit excited, talking fast, but I pray that you received just the deep truth of this word and felt the love of Christ through this message. Uh, that is my prayer for you. And so at this time, I invite you members to bring your tithe uh, into this storehouse. It ensures that the word of God goes out from this place. If you have an offering to sow uh, members or visitors, it ensures that this ministry is built up. 
And if you have a seed for uh, any need in your life, it will come back to you 30, 60, 100 fold. Your seed will be multiplied. Thank you for giving to this ministry, however you give. In prayer, love, support, encouragement, it will all come back to you. I thank you for you blessing me. I know God is blessing you. I love you. Thank you. I'll see you next week, next month. Go in his glory. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.